What you are about to listen to is me, Pastor Michael Bowman, as I think out loud about and try to apply the scripture to anything and everything that comes to mind. This usually happens in my car. So jump in and let's talk. I've recently been thinking a little bit about how we do ecumenical work and ecumenical dialogue between different you know, Christian traditions and, and uh, belief systems and things like that. And uh, one of the things that's always just kind of given me the heebie-jeebies a little bit uh, when it comes to ecumenical work is uh, simply the, the typical, maybe evangelical way of, of acquiescing on doctrine and truth and simply uh, trying to you know, meet each other at the least common denominator, uh, trying to uh, you know, simplify things down to such an extent that our doctrinal distinctives between different denominations and different uh, Christian sects and things like that are, are almost non-existent anymore. And we just pretend like, yeah, we all actually agree. I think this happens a lot when evangelicals try to uh, reach out to you know, Roman Catholics or Eastern Orthodox, etc. And uh, I think this is a really uh, problematic way of doing you know, ecumenical work. Uh, I think that uh, when we try to be ecumenical on the doctrines we believe, like in, in the faith, in like what we believe, I think this is actually where we run into the most problems. And I think it would be much more healthy for us to work, you know, our, our ecumenical muscles, as it were, in the areas of, you know, common interest and goals um, rather than constantly trying to, uh, you know, say, hey, we all agree in the end. We're, let's find uh, a place that we agree on the faith, on the doctrine. And now this can be done to a certain degree, right? So, you know, all true, you know, Christian denominations would hold to, say, the Apostles' Creed and believe the things uh, in the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. And I think that it would be, you know, fine to basically say any, you know, Christian you know, group denomination uh, that claims the name of Christ, but they deny some of these things that hold core truths to the faith. Well, we're just not, we're, we're going to treat them as though they're not Christian. Uh, we need to see them as though they're not Christian because they've denied uh, essential truths. So maybe there's a way in which we can say, yeah, okay, we're all Apostle Creed Christians or something to that effect. But uh, our other doctrinal distinctions are still important. They're, they're not unimportant. And I feel this more acutely, obviously, because I'm a pastor. And in many ways, pastors are kind of the, you know, they're the keepers of the lines. They're, they're the ones that are supposed to keep the doctrinal distinctives most clear. And uh, it's, you know, just part of the duty. It's part of, you know, being an ordained minister, I think, to uh, just make clear what it is that we believe. And uh, it's a little bit easier maybe when you're just a layperson and it's, you know, it's, it's maybe not as, you know, important to you that we hold uh, really uh, strongly to, say, Presbyterianism or, or something to that effect. Um, and and I, I understand that. I get that. Uh, I, so I get, I get that it's going to be a little bit different for me simply because I'm a pastor. Um, however, I, I was thinking about this because I took part in this kind of more, you know, ecumenical group of people dealing with uh, the natural family recently, this conference uh, that was held in town here. And it was great. It was really good. Um, it, it was just, what was good about it, I think, is that uh, the ecumenical dialogue was not, hey, let's come together to discuss, you know, uh, how we're all really the same and we all get along and uh, we should all believe the same stuff. Because uh, no matter what, when that happens, somebody's just trying to, you know, somebody's trying to take the lead and say, hey, you should all join us, right? A lot of times within like evangelical and Catholic dialogues, for instance, a lot of times it's evangelical saying, you know what, we're going to change our language so that it fits within your, you know, paradigm as Roman Catholics. And then what happens is just a slow degrading of the, you know, distinctives of evangelicalism and you just end up with a, you know, weird kind of, of uh you know, watered down Roman Catholicism, basically. Um, and I, I think that's unhelpful. I just think, I, I just think it's not, not a healthy way to do it. Let's make our distinctives clear. Doesn't mean we can't dialogue about it. We should. Um, I love that idea. In fact, I, I think it's really important. And I think it's good, especially for, say, like pastors um, or theologians, you know, leaders in 
in the various uh, churches and denominations to get together and discuss these things um, in a way that, you know, maintains distinctives while at the same time trying to find out, hey, where is the line? Hey, maybe we can, you know, join together in, in ways that we didn't realize before. And maybe our language is a little bit unclear and we can clarify it and then come together. There are ways that could maybe happen. But, uh, but I don't think that's the most helpful thing for people who are already not very theologically uh, astute to do, or, or those who are, like, they don't have as much at stake, in a sense. Um, I'm not sure that that's actually the healthiest way to do it. Um, those who don't know their doctrinal distinctives that well should not be the ones leading the discussions on ecumenical, you know, uh, theological discussions. However, when you join together around other things, such as, for instance, a desire to find uh, some personal self-sufficiency by living on the land or agriculture. So you, you share that kind of thing in common or you share in common um, a desire to see the thriving of, say, the natural family um, or certain, you know, uh, certain Christian ethical beliefs uh, in society at large. I think those are the areas that uh, ecumenical work is best done. Okay, those things, it's like where, where it all like, you know, touches the ground. And one of the reasons it's hard for a lot of us, I think, is that like our faith is the center thing. It's the most important thing. It's, it's central to who we are and the life that we live. And so it's hard to like disconnect those things. And it's, it's not as though they are disconnected. Um, however, I can live next door to somebody who, you know, is uh, in a very different, you know, Christian denomination than I am. But we can still be neighbors, we can share the land, we can work together, you know, uh, when, you know, something on, you know, my farm uh, isn't going well and I need help, they might come help me and I can go help them. And, and we can do that without having the exact same theological beliefs, say. Um, but if we then came together and said, well, what we have to do is make sure that we agree theologically, the chances of that happening are very low. And that's where, you know, increasing division actually takes place, I think. Um, it, it, it just creates uh, more opportunity for division, if not done in a more healthy way. So I think, anyway, what I'm saying is, is hopefully making sense. I, I think that uh, ecumenical work is probably best done. Not that we can't interact on issues of theology and issues of doctrine. Um, we should do that. But I think that's, that should be a, a work primarily for those who are, you know, at the head of of dealing with theology and doctrine in the churches. Uh, but the ecumenical work that can be done on kind of the ground level that I think is actually more helpful long term as far as, you know, preserving uh, the faith and and some kind of, of, you know, Christian worldview within culture is going to be, I think, the work that is much more uh, on the ground dealing with, you know, uh, shared common values, beliefs as far as work, business, uh, you know, areas probably of politics, um, social, social values, um, those sorts of things I think are probably, you're more likely to find common ground and agreement that we can, where we can work together than in areas of doctrine or teaching. Hey guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has been, go ahead and rate it, review it, or share it with a friend, especially if you're in La Crosse, Wisconsin, or the surrounding areas. That helps me expand the audience and hopefully increase the impact of these ideas. If you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns on anything that I just talked about, you can reach me at pastormichaeljbowman at gmail.com. You can find more content from me, as well as information about the church that I pastor at ccc-pca.org. With that, I hope you can enjoy the many blessings of God today. Until next time.